We've got a big full bowl here. We've got a bowl and a half there. We've got an overflow at the back. We've also got a waste for the dishwasher to come in. And sometimes, who knows, you might have another waste as well. Uh, we've got our inch and a half waste at the back. We haven't clipped that just yet. And that goes into our main stack. So what we've got to do is bring all of these together. And this is where it starts to get a little bit difficult. So the main problem you're going to have is having all this stuff here to go through. So let's go through it all right now. So we've basically got abject hell in one of these boxes. You can pour them out and look, all that comes out. <laughs> Brilliant. And you're like, wicked. I've got some like bona fide, fantastic instructions here. The thing is, what they don't tell you in the instructions is that you probably don't need to use all of this stuff. Now, the first thing I'd do, if I was you, is just get the obvious bits and bobs out of the way. So pick these two up, your two bowl bits, pick up the two bowl clamps, find the actual screw bits for them as well, and get them attached first on your basin. So let's do that really quickly now. Let's face it, all kitchen sinks are different. All of their waste systems are different as well. So I'm not gonna give you the 100% way of doing it on your kitchen sink, but I am gonna give you a quick overview as how to do it normally. So we've got our bit here. We've got our rubber on there, just like so. And we're gonna pop that in there, just like that. Now we've got our outlet piece here that's also got our integral overflow already attached. What we need to do, this is gonna be difficult for me to do with one hand, guys, because I'm holding up camera. But this is going to slot up under here like so. Uh, we're going to face our outlet, the little threaded outlet to the back, because then that lines up exactly where our overflow is. And as you can see, hopefully there, we've got a nice little rubber seal on the bottom that when we tighten these up together, so we've got our little, we've got a little screw just there as well with a little slot in it. That pops in our hole, just like that. Then using a big slotted screwdriver from up top, I can marry these up from the bottom. So I've got my screwdriver in there. And then I can just get this on like so, and just nip that up. Now I want to get the back facing exactly the way I want to be. We shouldn't have to put any silicone on here as well, because it's a nice clean bottom face here that that's sealing on. Right, just doing that to this one, making sure again that it's on there like that. At the moment, I'm not quite worried about which way the actual outlet's gonna face, because I'm gonna nip it up. We're not gonna go mad, like I said, I'm gonna go mad tight. So we'll still be able to move it again in a minute to get it directed in the sort of the direction we want to be in. So that's now tightened on way. Oh, we're getting there already, guys. Let me just do the overflow. These are all completely different, guys. So I'm not going to show you, well, I'll show you a little bit. You always have the rubber seal on the actual underside, the other side of the basin. So that'll fit up to our basin like that. You'll usually have some method of putting a decorative fascia over the top and then pulling that all tight with some screws. And then at the back, as we pointed out earlier on, we're just going to pop our little, we've got a little tapered rubber there and a compression nut to go on. This is fully maneuverable and also can go up and down. So this is where I'm starting to say that uh, often they'll send stuff out that isn't specifically for your sink. So if you've got literally 1500 pieces of stuff in a box, you don't have to use all of it, okay? Uh, it's just whatever you need and what you want to use for that job. I'm going to get me to go drive over here. Right, so I'm just going to pop this on here. Tell you what, guys, you might as well get a quick look, hey? Might as well get you in there to have a quick gander at the whole thing, like, as you see in Scotland. So you're inside now, you're right in the center of the world. This is always a really fun bit. Put that on there. Oh, this is never easy, even when there's not a camera in the way. <laughs> Please say you've got a thread on. Please. Oh yes, you have, you absolute legend. Someone's gonna be buying a lottery ticket later on today. There we go, looking up nicely. Put the other one on here. <laughs> this is usually a real pig of a job, this bit. Like, that went really well, actually. Oh, just put this on here, and there we go. Right, back down underneath, just gonna slacken this off a tiny bit so we get it facing the right way. There we go, lovely. And I'm just gonna push on my, just the outlet like so. Right, and there we go, that just slips on there. Everything we do when we're kind of doing anything on uh, rubber compression fittings on waste is generally kind of hand tight. We're not gonna go mad with it. So there we go, that's on there now. So once we've got those bits done, there's a few more bits gone, isn't there? Uh, right, what I do now, have a quick look at what you've got. Now, for this, there are some bits, like this piece here we're not gonna be using, and there are quite a lot of bits in here as well that we're just gonna be forgetting about for a second or two. First thing we wanna do is have a precursory glance at our lovely instructions, right? 
And really what you wanna do first up is just get your trap made. This will convert us up to standard inch and a half UK. So we're gonna pop our trap on like so. And then we also know that we're gonna be using a compression fitting like this underneath with a small little like plastic bit on there to go onto that. And suddenly we've got our manifold made, okay? And we know roughly what we're gonna be doing there. And it's completely adjustable as well. So now what I'm gonna do is say, right, what do I wanna get into my manifold? I know, for example, that I'm gonna be getting this piece in, so I'm gonna need one of these and a nut on there, so we know that. Then I know I've got two basins going in, so I'm gonna need two extenders, and then all the rest I'm blanking off. So I'm gonna do those blanks and get all these together now. <laughs> In you go. <laughs> so guys, we can see that we've got our two wastes here like so. And we also know that we've got our big extension hose here for the waste from our dishwasher next door. So number one, I know that my, my outlet, my main outlet to this beast over here wants to point somehow that way. Also what I like to do is keep the waste away from the front of the cupboard. I don't want it running over here because I want the customer, I want my customer to be able to use the cupboard when they've gone. So as you can see, we've tried to keep all our pipe that we've done already to the back, um, so it's nice and out of the way. Um, so yeah, just try and do that as well. So the next thing I wanna do is I'm getting, the thing is you get rid of pieces that you know you need to use. So we're getting rid of pieces here because we know that we're gonna need a nut and a small little compression as well, O-ring on there to make these work, okay? Because we know that we're gonna have to use these and get these pointing down like that. The next thing I wanna do, so let's just get these whipped in now. Make sure you put these on, otherwise you're gonna get leaky boos, and we don't want leaky boos, do we? All right, so there we go, pop this on there like so. Like that. Right, now we know that we've got our two down pipes, and we know, therefore, that they're gonna be going into this three here, these three here. What I'm also going to do now is, I'm going to put on our overflow. Make sure as well sometimes that the overflow hole has been cut out because sometimes they're not there. <laughs> yeah, that's in. Everything's fine. Everybody happy. Oh my God. Oh my God. So we're gonna try and push these back out of the way like so. At the same time, I don't really wanna get away of all my valves at the back here. So what we might do is push, the, push these down a little bit because we're lucky enough we can cut these back as far as we like. So we're lining up our tops. Now, the great thing about this is I now know which ones I want these I want to blank off. I know that I want to blank off this middle one here. So I can put my blank in there like so, and that's done up. And then I'm gonna do the same with this end one. Keep all the old spigots and everything like that in a box, because you never know, you might be adding bits and pieces to your kitchen and stuff like that in the future. You don't want to be throwing this sort of stuff away. So you can knit these up nice and tight, hand tight now. Right, so next up, I just want to, we're going to cut. We're going to make some cuts here. And I'm just going to mark up where I want to do them. So now I know exactly where I can put these. I know I can make a cut here. And I can also make a cut just here. Exactly, but roughly the same level as each other. Because I'm super lucky. I've got some lovely cutters here, that means I can cut these really easily. Away with you! Then we can pop our nut and our ceiling ring on there, like so. And then we're ready to just do up all the work that we've just done here, just now, make out nice and beautiful. So this can go in. Right, I'm just gonna bring this out. There we go, and then that's straight. Try and get these up as far as you can. And you see how far out of the way we're doing this? It's nice and like tucked away out the back. All right, make sure as well, if you can, that this manifold here is as level as you can get it. While we've got it in this position now, we're just gonna pop up our waist I'm just going to push that as far out of the way as I can. Often with the waist you'll get an O-ring or a circlet, something like that, that will hold it all together for you, but we haven't got that one on this particular model today. Right, and now I can point this in exactly the right position where I want it. Now guys, for those of you who don't know, we're going to use solvent weld on this. We've done videos on how to use solvent weld on our channel, so have a look there for later on. What we're going to do is I now know, because I've got my 
my elbow here that we're going to be going down into, exactly where I need to cut this pipe here. Oh, satisfaction, everybody. Plenty of splodge on that. Right, give it, put it on, give it a twist. That's what I always do anyway, that's my way. Wipe off with your finger, make it look beautiful. And then I can marry this up to that and know exactly how far I need to cut this. I, for some reason, always take off this piece and the rubber O-ring, and then I fit everything together with it fitted around here. It's my way, guys. That's just the way I do things. It's either my way or the highway. So I'm gonna put some splodge on there. And as you can see, it's a bit wibbly wobbly at the moment, because the first fix, we just left this. So we've got plenty of wibbly wobbly on it, which is, I think is a good thing. I like a bit of wibbly wobbly. Um, even though I've got to get a fair bit of this this mucky boo. Right, so we we'll pop that on there, give that a little twist as usual, my little twisty do. And now we can push this in to where we need it. Oh, there we go. And then we're lucky here, we've got lovely big breeze block walls. Woohoo! Let me get my grill, my drill. And now I'm just going to clip this at the back because I'm a good boy. Let's pop that up out there, out of the way. And then we'll be able to turn our water on in a sec and test for leaks. Oh. There we go. All done. Right then guys, the moment of truth. Get down here and switch these beads on. Make sure we got the leaks. Uh, I would recommend as well, just before you turn any taps on, tighten everything up. Make sure all the stuff you've put in is nipped up nicely. So I try and fill both of these up. Look at that. We've got a little lid on there. I mean, these are obviously self-explanatory, really. Pop them in nice and easy. Let's get this going. We've got another one of these, so we've got a double little tap on there. Time goes by. Flip around, y'all. Oh, shit. <laughs> I was going everywhere, mate. Oh, dear. Well, right, that's filling up. Let's just find some blue roll. Here we go. Blue roll, everybody's favourite. The moment of truth is here. Rip it off one-handed, because you're in my other hand, guys. Oh. Let's get going. So now we're just going to look at all our joints, make sure we've got no leaks, and also look to see that you've got a nice quick run as well. So that's going down really nice and quick. But that one's finished already, and this one's just about to finish off. One, I hope you look and look how much we've got left over. These are handy for us plumbers because they're great for pump valves. We all know why, y'all. So that's going back in the box. But this is just going to go in here just in case they want to add more stuff. And that just shows you how much stuff is left over when you do a job like this. We've filled up, we've done a couple of flushes, everything's running away absolutely hunky dory. I'm really, really pleased. Um, and yeah, just really, really happy with the whole job and how it's gone. So remember, do the tops first, then build up your trap, then build up your manifold, figure out what you want to go where, cut everything back to where you want it so it fits nicely into your manifold, and then run your manifold outlet back to the stack, and then you're sorted. It's easy, but when you open up a box like that, it fills a lot of people with terror. And I've got to say, I open it now, and I'm like, oh, good God. Especially when you see instructions like that. So, oh, well, well written, lovely. So there we go, guys, all running fine. We've got no leaks whatsoever. I hope you enjoyed this video today. I hope it's given you a better idea about what to do when you've got all those bits laying out in front of you. There's a whole kitchen that needs doing and you know, you're like pulling your hair out going totally mental trying to fix it. So I hope you've given you an idea about that. I hope you think that the job that we've done is nice and neat as well. I'm really proud of it. And I know that, you know, when I come back and see these guys to service their boiler, they're gonna be happy with it again too. Please follow us on Instagram. Doing loads of stories on Instagram at the moment. Absolutely loving the story sting. Please also subscribe to our channel on YouTube. We upload every week. We upload plumbing disasters. We upload fun stuff. And we also upload the instructional videos and the tutorials that you've watched now. So you never know, we might be able to help you in the future as well. There's some big things going on in the world of plumbing parts, but I don't want to tell you what they are yet because if I do, I might jinx it and it might never happen. So please click on those links that are appearing right now, guys. Again, if you've got any questions, please comment, click that like button below, and I'll try and help you out as well, guys, all right? So have a great week. I hope this has helped you out yet again, and I'll speak to you all very soon. Remember to hold tight.
sometimes say. Eh?